Penguin Random House Audio presents The Girls by Emma Klein Read for you by Katie McLean I looked up because of the laughter and kept looking because of the girls. I noticed their hair first, long and uncombed, then their jewelry catching the sun. The three of them were far enough away that I saw only the periphery of their features, but it didn't matter. I knew they were different from everyone else in the park. Families milling in a vague line, waiting for sausages and burgers from the open grill. Women in checked blouses, scooting into their boyfriend's sides. Kids tossing eucalyptus buttons at the feral-looking chickens that overran the strip. These long-haired girls seemed to glide above all that was happening around them, tragic and separate, like royalty in exile. I studied the girls with a shameless, blatant gape. It didn't seem possible that they might look over and notice me. My hamburger was forgotten in my lap, the breeze blowing in minnow stink from the river. It was an age when I'd immediately scan and rank other girls, keeping up a constant tally of how I fell short, and I saw right away that the black-haired one was the prettiest. I had expected this, even before I'd been able to make out their faces. There was a suggestion of otherworldliness hovering around her, a dirty smock dress barely covering her ass. She was flanked by a skinny redhead and an older girl, dressed with the same shabby afterthought, as if dredged from a lake, all their cheap rings like a second set of knuckles. They were messing with an uneasy threshold, prettiness and ugliness at the same time, and a ripple of awareness followed them through the park. Mothers glancing around for their children, moved by some feeling they couldn't name. Women reaching for their boyfriend's hands. The sun spiked through the trees, like always. The drowsy willows, the hot wind gusting over the picnic blankets. But the familiarity of the day was disturbed by the path the girls cut across the regular world. Sleek and thoughtless as sharks breaching the water. Part One It begins with the Ford idling up the narrow drive, the sweet drone of honeysuckle thickening the August air, the girls in the back seat holding hands, the car windows down to let in the seep of night, the radio playing until the driver, suddenly jittery, snaps it off. They scale the gate, still strung with Christmas lights, encountering first the dumb quiet of the caretaker's cottage, the caretaker taking an evening nap on the couch, his bare feet tucked side by side, like loaves, his girlfriend in the bathroom wiping away the hazy crescents of eye makeup. Then the main house, where they startle the woman reading in the guest bedroom, the glass of water quivering on the nightstand, the damp cotton of her underpants, her five-year-old son by her side, murmuring cryptic nonsense to fight sleep. They herd everyone into the living room, the moment the frightened people understand the sweet dailiness of their lives, the swallow of morning orange juice, the tilting curve taken on a bicycle, is already gone. Their faces change like a shutter opening, the unlocking behind the eyes. I had imagined that night, so often, the dark mountain road, the sunless sea, a woman felled on the night lawn. And though the details had receded over the years, grown their second and third skins, when I heard the lock jamming open near midnight, it was my first thought, the stranger at the door. I waited for the sound to reveal its source, a neighbor's kid bumping a trash can onto the sidewalk, a deer thrashing through the brush, that's all it could be, I told myself, this far-off rattle in the other part of the house, and I tried to picture how harmless the space would seem again in daylight, how cool and beyond danger. But the noise went on, passing starkly into real life 